Alright guys, we are back mostly. Looks like we're uh, about half of us are back. Sorry about that. I think Olivia was doing a FaceTime video call. Uh, despite our request. So that might have been the reason. How's the uh, quality now? Is it a little bit, uh, does it seem okay? Yeah, exactly. Just to plan, just to plan break. This was all planned. This was all staged for, uh, for an, an intermission two packs away from the end. <laughs> all right, let's see where we left off. We're on, uh, Justin's pack number 34. We'll wait a couple more minutes here, or 30 seconds or so, and see if other folks stroll in. All right. I think we can get resumed here guys so number 34 is Justin W and we just started opening number 34 when we got cut off so Ozzy Smith Reggie Jackson Johnny Grubb Ken Schramm Ricky Nelson George Brett that's a nice one Ted Simmons, Art Howe. Yep, we got two nice ones so far. Ozzy Virgil. Jerry Harrison and John Lowenstein. Nice pack right there. Okay. So that was number 34. Up next is number 35. Yep, Olivia was doing a very important uh, FaceTime video call with her, with her friends. <laughs> Okay, 35 is Jeremy, Daryl Thomas, Bill Stein, Jack Fimple, Lamar Hoyt, Jose De Leon, Roy Thomas, Dan Dryson, Jim Rice. That's a nice looking Jim Rice, a little off centered left to right, but the corners are butter. Greg Gross, Ernie Witt, Joe Simpson, Luis Aponte, Andre Dawson. That's a nice one. And Al Holland. That was pack number 35. And the last pack goes to Ben Z. So maybe the Mattingly is in the last pack. I'm hoping he is. Rick Waits, Lamar Hoyt, Reggie Jackson, John Denny. Let's look at the Reggie Jackson one more time. Oh, that's pretty good. Centering on that is pretty good. That's a nice one. Reggie Jackson, John Denny, Mike Easler, Eddie Murray. Very nice. Eddie Murray. I think this is our second Eddie Murray. Come on, Donnie, where are you? Buck Martinez, Lee Lacey, Mike Brodicker, 
Dave Ingle, Alan Trammell, Bud Black, and Marvell Wynn. I don't remember Marvell Wynn. So no Don Mattingly, unfortunately. But we did hit Daryl Strawberry, Ryan Sandberg, Tony Gwynn, second year cards, Andy Van Slyke, bunch of Hall of Famers and stars. So it was a ton of fun, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's take a look and see if we have any personals we can do. I'm going to hold on to this box. Oh, man. Five hours. Yeah, get to bed, buddy. Five. That's, I used to be able to run on five hours of sleep, but I can't do it anymore. All right, Jeremy. Sleep well, buddy. Thanks for hanging out, guys, until the end, and thanks for rejoining um, when we had that little hiccup there. I'm going to see if um, we have anything else we can do here tonight before I sign off. So we left off last Friday on 11... 68, 1168. So I'm going to go back to there. Let's see. Caleb was first to get into the new featured break, which, by the way, is 1987 Donruss. It's a box right here. And let's see. Daniel got a spot in the mixer adam got two spots in the mixer so mixer's got to be close to sold out now keith got another spot chad got two set break packs of 84 nice he got a wax stack of 89 a series one blaster so we can we can do that if you want to hang out some more chad or we can save it for um thursday it's up to you i'll let you decide and then uh, Jeremy F., who is new to the pack, I believe. Welcome, Jeremy. Thank you for hanging out with us, buddy. Jeremy F. got a spot in the mixer. So I believe the mixer's got to be close to filled now. Let me take a look. Actually, I'll leave this here for now. So again, the giveaway cards for the next featured break are going to be... Barry Bonds. Let's Barry Bond put in this put Barry Bonds in the second spot. I think this is the order I announced them in. Mark McGuire rookie, Barry Bonds rookie, and Tim Tebow rookie. So those three beauties right there. Let's take a look at the the mixer. Still a few spots left in the mixer. I think 10 or 11 spots left. So real quick, before we let Chad make a choice here. Okay, yeah, we can get we can get into them tonight if you want. I might take a quick bathroom break. Uh, but yeah, we can definitely do that. Let's see. So real quick, before we rip Chad's personals, the uh, mixer is... And I'm mostly talking to the new folks in here. Uh, Alan, S Alan S, and Anthony. I don't, I don't know if you guys are in the mixer yet. If you're not, here's what it is. It's a three box hobby box mixer of 2019 and 2020 baseball. This one is a 2020 Gypsy Queen. It's got two on card autographs, guys. So much nicer than uh, sticker autographs. We're doing a Tops Fire box. This is a random team group break, so each spot gets you a random team in the break. Two hits per box in this one, so one guaranteed autograph, and the other one, I assume, is a relic. So that gives us three guaranteed autographs, and then we're also doing 2019 Update Series, Tops Update Series, which has one autograph or relic card. So we know we're going to get three autographs, and then we're going to get either another a fourth autograph or a relic card and you know 2019 uh houses some of the best rookies uh in the 2019 three tops releases we got a uh, probably the better ones are keston hira and 
as far as hobby wise, Vladdy Guerrero. Uh, and then there's like the second appearance of of people like Alonzo and uh, Tatis, which I don't consider true rookie cards, but they're also in there. 2019 was a very popular release. 2020 Gypsy Queen's really hot right now, trending upward. So I'm really excited to get into this, guys. Yep, I can check. I could check the email after uh, after the show tonight. Absolutely, Pedro Taco, no problem. All right, so let me. Uh, I didn't actually have a chance to use the restroom when I was upstairs checking the Wi-Fi. Let me do that real quick, and I will be right back. And we're gonna so stick around. We'll do um, we'll do a giveaway pack, and then we'll do. Uh, Chad's got some personals that are going to be fun because he's extending the uh the life of the 1984 tops um with the set break 1984 tops where we're with the don mattingly rookie card is still in there so if you were in the 84 featured break the the one that we just did and you we didn't hit the Mat mattingly we, we have another chance to hit mattingly and we have uh daryl strawberry still hanging out in the 1984 set break pack then he also got a stack of 89 Donruss. So uh, we haven't hit the Ken Griffey Jr. in there. So we're looking for Ken Griffey Jr. in there. And uh, also 2019 Top Series 1. So we'll do that right when we come back. Don't change the channel. We'll come back with a giveaway pack from the wheel. I'll see you guys in a moment.
All right, guys, we are back. I walked right by a box of uh, crumble cookies. Um, Adam, do they have crumble cookies where you are? I don't know if it's just in the Denver area. It's like made to order cookies. I couldn't, I, I couldn't resist. You guys know every time I go to the bathroom, I end up like grabbing a snack or something. Um, but don't worry, I washed my hands and dried them very carefully. I would would not risk getting any uh, grease or cookie on my fingers. Um, but oh my god, those cookies are on slam. So good. Hey Patrick, how you doing, buddy? Yep, crumble cookie. It's just called. I think it's just called crumble, and like they have. They're actually like pretty advanced. They have like an app. They do del delivery, and they were like hardcore doing hardcore delivery volume when we were on the more strict lockdown. Um, but if you go there, there'll be like there's usually like a line out the door, and the cookies are. Reminds me of like the cronut phase when I lived in New York. Not quite as as crazy as that. <laughs> so, I had to snag a bite of that. All right. Let's do Chad's personals. Chad, do you want to start? What do you want to start with? Cronuts, man. Cronuts are no joke. People wait like... It's still a, it's still popular in in Manhattan right now to this day. I just talked to my I mean not during the lockdown but before it. Just talked to my buddy and he's like, yeah, people still wait like three hours in line for the cronuts. It's a cross between a it's probably implied, but it's a cross between a cronut, sorry, a croissant and a donut. Oh man, I've only had it once and it was like heaven. Heaven in my mouth. All right, Chad, do you want to start? What do you want to start with, buddy? You want to go to the 84 again? Yep, that's what I thought. 84, 89, blaster. Okay, sounds good, brother. So let's go to the 84, and then we'll go to the 89. All right, we're continuing the 84 fun, thanks to Chad. So, I'm going to pick two random ones for Chad. At his request, I'll pick this one right cha, and this one right cha. Okay. And then, where's my 89 at? Oh, it's right here. And we'll get to that 89 right afterwards. All right, first 84 set break pack for Chad. He's got two of them. Good luck, buddy. That's a nice giveaway, Pedro. Lopez, Michael Berry, Roy Smalley. Kent Herbeck, Rick Roden, Tom Herr. Nice. Chad says if we pull a Murphy, it goes to Justin. That's nice of you, buddy. Ron Davis, Danny Heap, Frank Voila. Viola. <laughs> Frank Voila. Frank Viola, Steve Howe, 
Steve Howe was a notorious pitcher in the Yankees at one point, notorious for not for good reasons. Carl Yaskremski, uh, Johnny Bench, and Gaylord Perry, and Steve Carlton, Nolan Ryan, and Tom Seaver. Look at this one. Remember, I think we pulled this one from the box, but the centering was nothing like this one. So, gotta love Nolan Ryan. And the second pack for Chad. Wayne Tolson, Alan Ashby, ooh, Ron Jackson, Pat Tabler, Gary Templeton, Lou Whitaker, sweet Lou Whitaker, very nice, that's an extra hit. That should have been in the back, sleeved up. George Bell, Buddy Bell, Don Baylor. And the hit. Uh oh, it's a Met. Daryl Strawberry rookie card. Wow, that's two tonight. And look at the centering on that, guys. Beautiful Daryl Strawberry rookie card. That's two and one night, guys. We pulled one from the box, and then Chad just pulled one of the set break pack. That's a very lucky hit. One out of however many packs are left. Look at that, baby. That's a really nice one. Scott, uh, Chad got into some personals. So this is what Chad just... Let me get Scott the link to... The set break pack page. I think I've... Yeah, we talked about this, I think, last time you were on, Scott. So, Chad broke into the... He's on this page. And he just busted into the 84 set break pack because we still have a Mattingly rookie hanging out in there. So, we're trying to find Mattingly, presumably, but we also... In the process of that, we hit on Daryl Strawberry rookie card. <laughs> Booger sugar. Yep, 84 break is over. Uh, we got disconnected there. We had some... Um, connection issues. But looks like everybody's back now. I am flattered by that. I thought we would have lost half of you guys for sure. Permanently. Well, not permanently, but for tonight. So it looks like everybody's back. Um, I promised to do a giveaway. and I broke into the into Chad's personals first. But let's shift gears for a minute, if you, do you, if you don't mind, Chad. Um, let's do a giveaway pack. Where's my packs at? Oh, here they are. Yep. Well, let's grab one of these, too. So, we're going to do winner's choice again. Let me just get these laid out on the table here. Get a bunch of different packs to choose from. Over there in the corner is where I'm putting them. Probably can't tell what they are yet, but we'll go through them. Okay, cool. We'll do the giveaway. Thank you, Chad. Let me get my screens organized, better organized. Okay, write this down before I forget. Go to our wheel, and let's load up the wheel.
All right, if you're idle, now's the time to come back in. It shows 22 people. Um, then, oh, I just lost it. Okay, I'm back now. Let's close the tab on accident. All right, so yeah, if you're idle, now's the time to come back in, guys. We're going to give away. So we got Chad, Pedro Taco, Josh M, Scott. Um, we got my good buddy, the card hobbyist, who's taught me a lot so far, guys. Check him out if you haven't already. He's a cool dude. Um, the way that he runs his uh, channel, the spirit of it, like he's he's very friendly, just like we are. Uh, there's a lot of friendly friendly folks in the hobby, but. Anyway, he's taught me a lot, actually. And, um, yeah, it says there's 21 people in here, but I only see five on the list. So let me know if I'm missing anybody. Let me share the screen. And... Yep, thank you for answering that question, Chad. I appreciate that, buddy. Oh, yeah. Does anybody have that poster? That was a genius ad campaign. Was that, that was Nike, right? The Hitman? That was genius. I bet you that poster is worth a lot now. Yeah, I don't know why it says 20. So we, I think the like list of participants is not always accurate, where it doesn't include folks that are idle. So give me the thumbs up. Somebody give me the thumbs up. I'll wait until I get two thumbs up, because there's such a difference between the viewer count and the list that I see. Scott is back. I got you on the list, Scott. Chad gives me the, th the thumbs up, so I'll wait for one more thumbs up, and then I'll spin. Pedro gives me the thumbs up. All right, guys, let's do it. And Patrick. Good luck to everybody. Pedro Taco. Congratulations, buddy. All right, what do you want to get into here? We got a few choices <laughs> for Pedro. <laughs> That's right, 92 Series 1. We've got a 93 Fleer, Prime NFL, Big League, 2019, 91 Fleer. That's a nice one. Basketball, 89 Don Russ, baseball, possible Ken Griffey Jr. rookie in there. Uh, one pack left. We were doing these in two, but this is the odd one out. So we got one pack. This is a really nice pack too. Only four cards, but 2017, 2018 basketball optic, 1998 tops, maybe a Tom Glavin in there. 96 top stadium club. And then we've got a 92 tops baseball. Your choice, buddy. You tell me and we'll rip it. Optic, good choice. All right. Probably looking for Donovan Mitchell and Jason Tatum in here. Off the top of my head, those are the rookies. There's more, there's plenty more, but Let's get into this bad boy right here. These, these packs are sometimes tricky to open. There we go. We got it. T 
Tim Hardaway Jr. Very nice. He went to Michigan. Come on. With the centering. There we go. Tim Hardaway Jr. JoJo White. I don't remember JoJo White. Vintage player. Must have been before the 80s or early 80s. You can tell with those socks. Otto Porter Jr. and Dennis Smith Jr. I don't know too much about Dennis Smith Jr. or what he's accomplished so far, but rated rookies are always nice. <laughs> I was just reading the the taunting, the Ohio taunting. Um, all right, so that was a giveaway. Congratulations on that, Pedro. Let's go to, we're going to go back to 1989 now. Back to 1989. And let's scoot this baby over here. Any particular corner, buddy? Denard Robinson, he, uh, so he got drafted. I forget who drafted him, but I was saying this, like the whole, his whole last two years at Michigan, I'm like, why is he playing quarterback? Why is he playing quarterback? He's a running back. Like the whole time I was like, he's a running back. Just play him at running back. Anyway, he played running back for the Jaguars for a couple years. And then he um, went to the XFL, I think. He went somewhere after that in some other league. Um, not my favorite Michigan years, actually, because that was like not the the traditional style of Michigan. But I did I did love Denard Robinson. I mean, he was he was a lot of fun to watch. But that's kind of like the dark ages of Michigan football. Yep, another sad story that didn't live up to the hype. We don't we don't get those recruiting classes like Ohio State does. We're not as we're not as spoiled as Ohio State. They have six three, six, nine. They have six five star Hold on, I need to get the Zamboni out. Get the Zamboni. A little cleanup action here. They have six five star recruits in their I think it's the 2021 20, class. And they have 13 this is football high schoolers in the top 100, which is not even fair. Yeah, Tom Brady will Tom Brady um fixes all those ailments. Hold them, god. Welcome to the pack, buddy. Hold them, God. Hold them. I was making sure that wasn't Holden. I thought maybe that was a Holden Caulfield reference. That would have been... Uh, I would have really geeked out about that if you were, you were making a Holden... Oh, got it. Holden poker. Yep, makes sense. I almost thought you were making a catcher in the rye reference. I read it Holden, Holden at first. Um, <laughs> Maurice Claret. Yeah, he does. I saw he's... um. He's uh, he's got his act together and he's doing some uh, what is he doing? I'll let I'll let Pedro say what he's doing. He's doing some good stuff for the community actually. So good for him, man. Talk about a guy that had a amazing future and flushed it down the toilet. But hey, we all make mistakes, man. Some more than others, but. No matter what, we're still human. So I give the dude props for for um, turning it around. I mean, he still has he still has a ton of opportunity. Three, six, eight, nine. You did you did a stack, right? I'm just making sure. Yeah, stack. Okay. All right. So I think we pulled the Biggio, 
Uh, I think we pulled a Randy Johnson. Randy dog. We pulled the Randy dog, but we're still looking for the the Griff dog. Yep, that's all that matters. No judgment. I mean, it's it's it is really liberating when you when you. I mean, trust me, I am not there yet. I'm not perfect, but it's really liberate. So I'm not like, I don't want you guys to think I'm like I, I've mastered this by any means. But when you stop judging other people, it it feels a lot better. Like <laughs> it just frees up all this space in your head and. It's liberating to just let go of all that. But we're so like, you know, our culture is so superficial. It's been drilled in our heads and reinforced in our heads to judge, 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 judge. So even, even like, you got to remember not to judge people that judge people. You know, it gets really meta. But um, it's easy to, it's easy to judge people. No, it's all good. I know you're teasing. Jay Buhner. That's got to be close to his rookie. Alex Sanchez. Now, you can tease me all day long about Michigan. I've been hearing it for like 20 years. So I'm kind of like... I'm impervious to your teasing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You think Project 2020 will fade fast? I don't know, man. I think it's the new sneaker craze. It feels a lot like when sneakers were being started, sneaker collaborations started happening with artists. Yeah, it's it seems like a changing, like a it seems like a transformational event like it's because it's opening up a whole new realm of possibilities and i'm pretty sure the floodgates are just beginning to open i mean granted that a lot of those prices might be inflated but this is like the beginning of a new era of cards like this is the first time we're seeing artists collaborate with cards and i don't and you know art itself is very long lasting and um you know strong part of culture so i feel like you know maybe Pro project 2020 itself will, might the, the hype might die down but they'll figure out other ways to incorporate i mean can you imagine when imagine when uh panini or whoever whoever owns the rights to fleer i don't know you guys probably know imagine when they start doing that for basketball can you imagine michael jordan like 90, can you imagine like the ProVision 91 card reimagined by an artist? Oh my God, those would just blow up. Yep. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why it's so genius from a marketing perspective because they're fusing together two segments like the art world um, and the sneaker world. Three segments actually, and they're bringing it all together. What did you buy? 10 bundles of which one? Hey, Steve. Yeah, the art... I mean, that's a good point. Just think about the artist's reach themselves. I mean, of course, they're sharing it on their Instagram, and they have huge followings. I mean, it's like the smartest... I, I guarantee you Panini is kicking themselves right now for not doing this first. Mark Lemke. It's, I find it very exciting. I've been buying pretty much at least five of each card for the last week. Um, I feel like a moron that I didn't start buying them earlier. I was, I saw it on social media and I was just like, not right now. I'll look at that later. You know, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but I get, I did get into some of the earlier cards before the, before the run up started happening. Um, in this, you know, from eBay. Thank you, Chad. Let's focus on Chad here. Let's pull a Ken Griffey Jr. rookie for Chad. The centering on here is really good, so if we pull it, it's gonna be it's gonna be good, Chad. Ken Caminiti, I think that's the second year. Ken Caminiti. No, it's all good, man. 
Jack McDowell, Black Jack. Flipped off the New York, uh, flipped off Yankee Stadium. You gotta have some courage to do that. <laughs> yeah, man, I am hooked on Project 2020. I am absolutely hooked. C. You know what's weird? C was not my favorite artist, and I think like the more that I look at his his art and his designs, his card designs, I'm like, okay, yeah, C is my favorite now. He reminds me of like Chicago um, art artists, like the Chicago artists from the '80s, um, like Roger Brown. He's got that kind of style. I don't know if he's where he's from actually. Kevin Brown, but Ermsey is. His cards are, I think, going to be the most collectible in the long run. The centering on these is beautiful, so if we... Hopefully we'll hit the Griffey. Yep, and Ben Baller is a... I have my list right here, actually. Um... So, C is my... This is my list of favorite artists. Ben Baller is actually not in my top three, but he is in my top five. C, But I do understand the appeal a bit of Ben Baller. It's just not my favorite personally. But but I did go pretty deep on the Dwight Gooden Ben Baller because if you think about it, what an awesome combination, right? Dwight Gooden, he's got that like gold chain on and he like, looks all grizzled in the photo and it's just like beautiful colors. The 85 Dwight Gooden card. I never realized how cool of a photo that was. I don't know what it is. Like the look on his face, he just looks like a tough guy. Um, and it just goes perfectly with Ben Baller style. So the Doc Gooden Ben, ba ben Baller is probably my favorite card other than the Trout Ermsey, which is everybody's favorite. But Ermsey number one. Tyson Beck, number two, Mr. Cartoon, number three, Grotesque, number four, Ben Baller, number five, Fuji, Natural, Blake Jameson, Keith Shore. Keith Shore was the one I was trying to remember that did the um, the Mark McGuire that's blowing up. It was either Keith Shore or Joshua Vitties. I don't remember off the top of my head, but those are my top ten artists, in case you're wondering. Yep, that's a good point. That's a good point, Pedro. It's bringing a lot of attention to the hobby because it's bringing in it's it's a crossover thing, crossover product, reaching into sneaker collectors, reaching into artists or art lovers. Jimmy Key, Kirby Puckett, George Brett, Andre Dawson. Is the Jeter City Line, is that Blake Jamieson, Cal, Dan Cal Daniels, Mike Schmidt, Billy Hatcher, Vince Coleman, two packs left for Chad, Fisk, Diamond King, I think so. Yep, that's a nice one. Fisk, Diamond King, good call. I was talking too much. I love Diamond Kings. It's cool that they've stood the test of time. I mean, that they still do Diamond Kings to this day. Oh, yeah. This is a sweet spot for me, too, in terms of when I was at the peak of collecting. Diamond Kings is the OG. Ozzy Guillen. Fourth year Ozzy Guillen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Chicka, chicka. The luck of the draw, boys. Beautiful. No issues with the, the black cards. It's really easy to have chipping on the edges. Let me prepare my penny sleeve. Yeah, I can't wait to get those Project 2020 cards. I actually picked up two of the Doc Gooden Mr. Cartoons on eBay for 50 bucks. 
Can you believe that? I got so lucky. Like, the day that I got them was the day that everything started running up like crazy. Also, the Tony Gwynn 83 Natural. I got four of those. Fingers crossed everything goes well. Pray for me that everything goes smoothly, because those cards are... Those cards are just going berserk. I turned that caps thing off. I don't know why it's doing that. Yeah, don't don't worry. Hold on, let me check something. Just ignore him, Scott. I could have swore I turned that off. Give me a second. What did you say though? I'm curious. Um What happened? Oh, nice. That's your first, uh, that's your first, um, junior rookie. That's awesome. That's all you said was nice, Griffey. Oh, man. Hold on. Caps protection. Oh, maybe I, I must have, I must have, uh, I thought I turned it off. Okay. It should be off now. Try it, try it now. No, it doesn't it doesn't go that far. I don't even think it can do that. <laughs> no, he's just excited. Um It should be good now. Try it, try some caps. Just to test it. Um but yeah. Patrick, card hobbyist, what do you think of Project 2020? I can't believe I got into those cards. Like, I really hope I get them in the mail. I mean, the, um, I saw the Tony Gwynn Natural is going, like, there was a sale for $800, like one of the most recent sales. I got it for $70, so I really hope I get that in the mail. Yep, I'm all about the innovation, too. It is, it happens to be my thing because I love art and it's like the perfect combination for, for my preferences. I'm just, yeah, Scott says he's just trying to turn a quick, yeah, dude, a lot of, that's smart, man. What, when did you start buying them? What number card? I'm going to feel like I'm behind the eight ball if you tell me like you started buying number 40 or anything before 40 or even before 60. We're just going to stare at this Griffey for a little while, guys. Just now? Okay. Yeah, the print runs are starting to get crazy. Everybody's like talking on Twitter like what's the print run? When, when is the print run too high? I don't know because the Doc Gooden Ben Baller, that was like 20... It was like 10? Was it 10? Or 20? I think it was 10,000. No, I think it was 20. I'm thinking of the Jackie Robinson. Mr. Cartoon was 10. But, um, yeah, I just started buying them from Tops on May 21st. And that's when I went uh, crazy on eBay. I was up, like, I pretty much pulled an all-nighter on eBay. And I got, like, 30 or 35 of them. Going back to like number 40, I got so lucky. It just, there was like a five hour window of time where they were still around between 30 and $50. And now they're all over like $300, $400. Yeah, that's a good outlook, man. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I really hope that these people honor the sales. I'm, I'm kind of nervous about it. I'm not going to lie. Oh, I got one baller Henderson, yep. Okay, that's good to know, Patrick. Twenty so we just passed twenty K, like with the last two cards that released that they that um the sale window closed. They just eclipsed twenty thousand. I mean the Mike Trout um one of the early Mike Trouts, I forget what artist it was, but that had thirty five thousand. Um, and that's well over $400. So it didn't seem to matter 
for Mike, but that's Mike Trout. Right, there you go. Ben Baller, Mike Trout was 39000 How much does that sell for, Scott? Yeah, I got 15 of those Griffies. I couldn't, I couldn't help it. 300. So what do you think about that, Patrick? Is that just because the demand for Mike Trout outweighs the supply? Because 39,000 print run and it's still going for 300. Are you, do you think if it's like, um, I don't know, let's pick another player. Like let's say like Mariano Rivera, Ermsey. Ermsey hasn't done Mariano Rivera yet. I feel like if that passes 330,000, I wonder if that's going to be in the hundred dollar territory. Yeah. I think I, it's so hard to judge because look, all these, like what Patrick was saying, 20,000 print run is in regular insert territory. But the thing is like, we're used to when we're, when we think 20,000 print run our like our historical demand has just been card collectors. Right. And now it's art lovers and sneakerheads and card collectors. So it we don't it's 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 impossible to know what the demand is. Right, exactly. I don't know. It's so hard. It's so hard. I still think like what's the probability it's gonna be less than nineteen dollars? I think that's how you gotta look at it, right? If you're buying the when they come out, like is there is there is there any downside at all? I don't think, oh, it's so brilliant. It's the, it's the most brilliant marketing thing I've seen in like, since like Nike and Jordan. It's so brilliant. I mean, when I, when I finally like actually took the time to look at it, I was like, oh my God, this is the smartest thing of like the last 20 years. Sorry, I'm going like ballistic, but I've really been wanting to talk to you guys about this. Um, Okay. Yeah, Pedro, no problem. I'll check it out afterwards. Um, thanks for hanging out, buddy. Have a good sleep. Sorry we got on this tangent, but I've just been wanting to talk about this for a while. Oh, yeah. D Jay, can you imagine when they do this with basketball with Jordan cards? Just imagine, like, Jordan, 90s Jordan cards is reimagined, or even the 80s Jordan cards. Oh, my God. Forget about it. Who owns the rights to Fleer right now? But, um, sorry, Chad. We did hit the Griffey for you. So I, f I figured it, I could take a little break and get all nerdy with the art stuff. Yeah, right. I agree with that. Every iteration after the first is going to be diluted. Um... But, okay, here's what I was trying to ask you guys, though, was, so, for the new releases at 1999, is there really any downside? Like, can it, can it actually be worth less than 1999? Because I know with sneakers, I was buying sneakers since 1999, and I bought, like, I had, at one point, I had, like, 230 pairs. Not one of those pairs, not one of them, ever... Uh, while I owned them, was worth less than the original retail value. Not even one. Not even one out of 230 of them. I remember I used to just buy them, like, as soon as they came out, I'd be like, okay, there's another... Like, that That's just, like, stocking away, like, a uh, an investment with only upside and no downside. I mean, that's how I think about this. I could be wrong. But, yeah, and if you get a bundle, if you get 10, you're getting them for, like, what, is it like, 14 or $16? So, I mean, what's the probability it's going to sell for less than 14 or 6? I don't see any downside either. I, don't, that's, I just wish I started buying them from Tops like two weeks ago. I mean, if it's just, uh, it's not good to think about it because you'll just like, you'll just, <laughs> you just live in the past. But I'm just like, oh man, what if I bought, what if I bought a hundred trout Ermsies? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Patrick says current moment there's no no downside for buying retail. Um as soon as the flippers outnumber the collectors, the prices will come down as a secondary market supply. That makes sense. That makes total sense. But Patrick, what about the original entry price retail? Like is there there's never any there's 
I don't think there's ever going to be any downside on that, right? Like the the aftermarket prices will come down, but it's never going to go down back below nineteen dollars. Do you agree? I mean, we're just speculating, but I'm really interested to hear what you guys think because this actually affects how many I buy. <laughs> how many I buy? I don't think it affects how many we all buy. I did get a box of 2020 Bowman today. It's pricey, man. It's like four times the original, like the factory price, which the consumer market never actually sees, but that's how I think about it. Not unless people start moving them in bulk. Okay. I'm just I'm I think I'm gonna keep buying ten of each until we hit fifty thousand. What do you guys think about that strategy? Just I'm just gonna literally like every card I'm gonna buy ten of each of them until I see that the last print run hit fifty thousand and then I'm gonna s slow down or stop. But maybe maybe we should, maybe I should make that number even lower. But we're already at twenty thousand. Yeah, we're gonna hit fifty. Fifty thousand is gonna happen like this week or next week. So I might. I don't know though. I'm gonna be kicking myself if if uh, if that's not the right number. But I do need to have a strategy, some type of strategy that I that I stick to. The lowest print run is like it's like twelve hundred or something around there ballpark. Yeah, ten thirty five. Like, it's amazing how long it took for people to catch on to this. Like, the first, I want to say, like, the first 15, 20 cards, the average print run was, like, 1,700. Yep. That's true. There can only be 1035 sets. I never thought about it like that. Oh man, if you have the set. I wonder if the, there would be a premium on having the set. Oh dude, when the next Trout is released, it's going to be nuts. So Trout has been done by um, <clears throat> RMC and Ben Baller. But Mr. Cartoon is the Trout. that He hasn't done Trout yet, right? <clears throat> That's the one that I'm looking forward to the most. And then RMC Jeter. I might have to get like 50 of those. <clears throat> anyway, let's get to the last pack. I could talk about that. Guys, I could talk about this stuff for like probably two hours straight. Because this is, this is like, there's actually, there's actually like decisions on the line here. George, did we already look at these? I like lost track of what, I lost track of reality. After we pulled the King Griffey, I went on to, <clears throat> I went on a giant rabbit hole <clears throat> yeah the next i'm surprised that the jeter grotesque oh grotesque oh yeah i said he was my number four i'm surprised that the jeter grotesque was not at least thirty-five thousand print run I did, uh, the craziest purchase I made though was I did buy everything that I bought on eBay was less than 50 bucks, except for two cards. I got a Jeter, um, grotesque for 160 and I paid over $200 for the Ted Williams Ermsey. Like the, it took, it took some courage to do that, but I just really, really wanted it badly. Hal Morris, Tom Bolton, but it is like close to, I think it's above 600 now, but there is a lot of downside on that one. I think I've decided to stay away. <laughs> like now that there's none of them you can get in the aftermarket for, for reasonable prices, I'm staying away from that. Cause that's, that's where the risk is. is if you start buying stuff on eBay, that's where you can get into trouble. Like kind of like how I did, but I, but I was pretty disciplined. I only picked two cards that I allowed myself to splurge on. 
So I feel like there's some, there you go. Craig Biggio rookie guard. I feel like I had some level of discipline. What's the documentary? I don't even know about this. Is it the P is it a PED documentary? Hold on, let me get my sleeve prepared. <clears throat> on the home run chase? Oh cool. Hold on to my Sammy Sosa rookies too. <clears throat> That should that should help Barry Bonds as well. June twenty fourth, nice. <clears throat> I think that'll that'll um, boost Barry Bonds cards. Maybe not. <clears throat> anyway, very interesting discussion, guys. I love the. Uh, intellectual the uh, intellectual discussion we were having there buying a hundred uh, any any artist Ricky or just a certain one yeah for me the Erm C Jeter is the one I'm gonna I'm saving up I'm saving up my last big move for that one I think I'm gonna go pretty deep on that one Whatever looks good, yeah. Man, these these cards are addicting. <laughs> They're so addictive. Cause it's it really is like having art. I mean, yeah. The only artist I really don't like at all is Sophia Chang. I mean, she's super talented. I realize like how talented all these people are. It's just a personal style. Like I'm not. I got one of the Willie Mays, Sophia Chang. That was the first day I started buying them on tops, but I'm not going to get any more of hers. Yeah, you know what? The so the Griffey that just released that was Keith Shore, right? Actually, let me double check that. Yeah, okay. So I actually didn't like his stuff at first, and the more I look at it, now I do like it. Art has a tendency to do that to me. Like That's how I felt about C 2 I was like, what is that? That's weird. And then the more that I looked at it, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool, actually. I like that because it's very unique. I didn't know how to feel about Joshua v Vides. V v I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He's the he's unique because he doesn't really him and old man old I don't know how to pronounce this guy either old man Alon they don't change the card too much um and I thought that might it's you can't really tell what's going on because the whole thing is just exploding it's hard to like differentiate like who's the most valuable artist who's the most valuable card and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> But um, but I I actually like the King Griffey Keith Shore one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, the Mark McGuire Keith Shore is bonkers. How much it's going for? I think I had Natural at seven on my list, but I think he's probably like actually like I should probably move him up to like number four. Anyway. We still have one box for Chad. He's being very patient as we have our nerdy art discussions. Congratulations, Chad, on that Griffey. Look at how beautifully centered that is, man. That might be a 10, brother. You have some good luck with these conditions. You got, you got a few Jordans that are probably 10s. And then you got the Jordan of baseball now that might be a 10 dude I really think that has a chance to be a 10 congrats on that all right let's 
Let's put these cards away and then we'll do go do your blaster box. Yeah, I'm anxious to get the ones that I got on eBay in hand and just get some of them listed and get my original investment back. It's crazy. You would think that Jess would think I'm out of my mind how much I'm investing in these, but she actually agrees with me with the choices. So that kind of gave me the green light to go even harder at it. I did. Yeah, I started buying. Um, well, I started buying from Tops on May twentieth. She does have a sister, actually. I think she's accounted for. Um, but yeah, Scott, I started buying from Tops directly on like May 20th. And my timing was like, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I wish I would have started buying before that. But that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to go to eBay. And I'm like, I'm buying everything I can find. Like, you know, not everything, but I'm like, I'm going to buy f two to three of every card I can find less than 50 bucks. And that's pretty much what I did. And I got, like, Tony Gwynn, Natural. I got, um, I got the Doc Gooden, Mr. Cartoon. The Tony Gwynn, Gwynn Natural, I p actually paid a little more than 50 <laughs> Yeah, exactly. She's like, oh, wow, good job. But still, like, it's an unrealized gain. We, had, we just have to remember that. It doesn't mean anything until... I actually, I mean, a lot of them I want to keep, like a lot of them I bought to keep for the long run, but I am getting kind of anxious just to like get them in hand and then get my original investment back. Cause I put a lot into it. Like, I don't even know anymore. I lost count over a, th well over a thousand dollars, probably close to 2000. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like the Tony, I think my favorite card overall is the Tony Gwynn Natural. Um, my but Doc Gooden is any of the Doc Goodens are just and Doc Gooden is not like my favorite player normally in the hobby or my favorite player to collect by any means. But for some reason, like he just translates really well to these cards. Like he's just he's just gangster looking. It's just sweet. Especially with Ben Baller. I mean, you can't beat that combination. Talk about a match made in heaven. Ben Baller with the Doc Gooden. Oh my god, that's like the coolest card ever. 2019. Alright, I'm done talking about that. <laughs> Went off the deep end. 2019 Top Series 1 for Chad. Thank you for your patience, Chad. As I had, or we, we had our little art corner there. So Scott, you're buying you're buying um bundles of ten. Cause you want the bundle is the one where you get one of each, right? Yeah, I'm sure you can hit. Um, I'm almost positive there's autos, possible autos in here. I'm looking at the odds on the side of the box right now. Yeah, autograph. It's a it's a pretty uh, low odds, but 
Yeah, there are possible autos in here. Most 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 modern uh, products, almost every single one will have potential for auto. It seems like. So yeah, two for thirty four. Right. Okay. And you just do 10 of those because it'll be, I think it's cheaper if you get 10 each of the singles. Because I think 10 each of the singles are like $14. It'll get your average cost down to $14. 2019s, or maybe you're just saying you, you, you're getting um, five of each. 2019 Series 1 for Chad, who's been very patient with us. Thank you again, Chad. Let's focus our attention on this now. Ranger Suarez, rookie card. Justin Upton, Nick Ahmed, Jonathan Villar, Julio Therion. Man, it's like a crazy uh, contrast going from 84 tops to 2018 tops. It's like getting in a time machine. Adrian Beltre, 84 style. Will Smith. Matt Chapman, Josh Bell. Carlos Rodon. Francisco Lindor, very nice. Trevor Bauer. Steven Duger. Enrique Hernandez, Justice Sheffield. Washington Nationals. Pedro Martinez. Grapefruit League Greats. That's a cool one. Ronald Acuna. Who's the best third baseman in baseball? Matt Chapman? Yeah. You pretty much win Golden Glove every, like, most of the recent years. Yeah, it seemed like the hype kind of died down around Justice Sheffield. I just watched somebody do the Robinson Cano drill with the net in front of the bat. It's kind of, it's really interesting. Check it out if you haven't seen that. It looks like he's going to hit the net with the bat, but it's all about like staying inside of the ball. Yeah, I don't know. It seemed like the, the hype was pretty big for Justice Sheffield, and then it kind of died down a little bit. Oh, uh, you know what drill I'm talking about? Yeah. Tuki Toussaint, that's a nice one. I've never done that. I, I feel like I would have benefited a lot from that. They say Robinson Cano's got the smoothest swing in baseball. Javier Baez. Cal Ripken. Otani tops now. Oh yeah, nobody nobody's as smooth as Griffey. Corey Dickerson, Tommy Pham. Miguel Andahar, Rookie Cup card, Lorenzo Kane.
It's weird if you look at Griffey's swing, it, there's like a small arch in his back. I wonder if that does something like science wise. Jackie Bradley, Irvin Santana, Brandon Lowe. That's a nice one, Brandon Lowe, rookie card. JT, JT Romuto, uh, tops gold card. It's a nice one. Ty Cobb, Grapefruit League greats. JD Martinez, Nolan Arenado, League Leaders. Mike Zunino, Shane Bieber, Future Stars. Did I miss a Buster Posey? Here, let me go back a little bit. Pull it. I'm going to pull a couple more out. Shane Bieber. There you go, Buster Posey. Blake Parker, Zach Cozart, Houston Astros, Josh Harrison, Sean Reed Foley, rookie card. We got a Eric Hosmer parallel card. Silver parallel. I don't know what the proper name for that is. Let's check. Base card parallels. Uh, platinum, I think. One, oh no, that's probably not platinum because that's one out of 25,000. Gold, rainbow foil. What's the proper, do you know, Scott? What's the proper parallel name for this? It just looks straight silver. Gold is 1 out of 13. Rainbow foil is 1 out of 10. Yeah, it must be rainbow. I guess I can see the rainbow in it when I look closely. Yeah, it's got to be rainbow. Matt Carpenter, 84 style card. Hey, Jimmy, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for popping back in. Yeah, we hit some good stuff tonight, man. We hit two Daryl Strawberry rookie cards. We hit a 80, um, like in the 83 group break, we hit a Tony Gwynn second year and a Ryan Sandberg second year, and they both look like they're PSA 10s. They're actually like the best condition cards we got out of the whole box, so we got, we got lucky that it happened to be a Tony Gwynn and a Ryan Sandberg. Ronald Acuna cup card. It's a good one. Ben Zorbist. Athletics team card. Willie Calhoun, Future Stars. Jordan Hicks, Tops Gold. So that's numbered to 2019. Gleber Torres. And a Ronald Acuna. Jacob DeGrom. Scott, we pulled... Um, it was for Ben... Uh, I opened one pack of Big League. Just one pack for him, and I pulled the Jacob DeGrand auto out of it. That was, like, really exciting. And I didn't realize, like, his advanced analytics are, like, he's at the top of the league for one of those advanced analytics. I didn't realize he was that good. I knew he was solid, but I didn't realize he was, like, rated number one certain ways of looking at stats. Scooter Jeanette. Scooter Jeanette's really popular. 
De Los Santos. I don't know much about him. Scott might be able to help us with him. Brian McCann. Manny Margot. We got an Ichiro 150 card. Andrew Benatendi, another super popular player. Blake Snell. Yeah, what's the... I'm kind of curious. I have the book right here. Let me check. Is in the I, it's baseball prospectus. Have you ever read that? It's, that's like I'm a super data nerd, so I love stuff like this. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, Jacob Degrom deserved run average. Jacob Degrom two point nine above uh, tied with Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander and Garrett Cole. Like what? I didn't realize he was in that class. I guess deserved run average is like a better measure of ERA, sort of. I'm just making that up. Let me look at the definitions. DRA, was it described? It was described at length earlier. Where is that? Measures how many runs the pitcher deserved. Yeah, so I think it's like adjusted ERA, sort of. Probably like taking out errors and stuff that wasn't his fault. We still have the commemorative card. Somebody was saying um, they pulled like a Tatis autograph out of this commemorative card. In, in the 20, um, I don't know if it was exactly this series. I mean, it must have been, it must have been series two, because he's not in series one. Roger Maris, I think we pulled another Yankee great like this. Those cards are cool. Yeah, who was that? Somebody was telling me they pulled a Tatis. It's the one with the medallion on it, not this one. I think it might have been in Topps Chrome. 2019 Topps Chrome. But that's pretty sick. Get these cards safely moved over here. Oh, DRA factors in uh, type of park, temperature, and other things. Nice. Yeah, they go they go really far with those advanced analytics. It's hard not to trust those. I don't know how some people just like. I don't know how you can disregard it completely. Probably very few um, baseball scouts, managers, coaches, probably very few people disregard it completely. But 10 years ago, like that's what that movie Moneyball is all about, really. It's like the guy from the athletics who, who sort of like pioneered advanced analytics like the or i should he didn't pirate advanced analytics but he he was like one of the first people to use them but back then like people used to just think it meant nothing I'm like numbers don't lie yo numbers don't lie it's like rasheed wallace used to say ball don't lie bill james there you go thank you yeah thank you chad for uh listening to me do one thing and talk about another I've been, I have have been trying to hone that skill. That is definitely like something that takes getting used to. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you hanging in there as we had had our uh, art art school class. <laughs> yeah, Bill James is is legit, man. I can't believe he's he's still in Oakland, right? He got like a huge offer from Boston like a long time ago and just didn't take it. In the movie, they they must have not depicted it like hundred percent accurately in the movie, because like everybody hated on him, and then he got this huge offer, and then he didn't take it. Like it doesn't it doesn't really seem congruent. So I'm I'm, I'm guessing that's not really how it went down. Probably the book might be a little bit more accurate. Oh, he did go to Boston? Oh, yeah, Bill James is the the guy who preceded Billy Dean, right? 
That's right. Yeah, oh yeah, Bill James was the guy that they talked about in the movie being like a ray isn't he like kind of like a ray clues type guy who has no background in baseball or whatever and then like that's why nobody gave him any credibility right 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 okay so after chad uh we've got a new jeremy new pack member jeremy f also jeremy f um I'll have to be careful when I when I uh, organize cards to make sure I get the right Jeremy's. But uh, Jeremy F. bought into the mixer. Thank you, Jeremy F., the new Jeremy F. And then Justin got a spot in the new featured break right over here, probably right before he went to sleep. Oh, that was a while ago, actually. Yeah, that was a while ago. We were just uh, we were working on the group break, so that'll do it for tonight, guys. I enjoyed our group break and hanging out with you guys, and especially enjoyed our Tops Project twenty twenty conversation. Spots in the mixer. Let's check. Oh, still the same number, probably because when I quoted the number before, I hadn't looked at the most recent orders. So still 11 left. If you guys uh, are on Twitter, I have a uh, post on there. I'll make it the pinned post. And if you guys retweet that, that would be awesome. Also, when you check out Scott, there's a little link that it gives you when you check out you can share that on social and whenever whenever anybody uh grabs anything from the shop from your link they get a ten dollar ten dollar off their first order and then when they buy something you get ten dollars off as well and you can do that as many times as you want so if you got 10 people coming from your link then you get a you'd get a hundred bucks in credit um, if you check your email, they, it should have sent you an email too. Um, it doesn't send you an email after every single order, but, um, but probably like after your first order. And then I think it sends, sends a reminder out like every month or something like that. But yeah, share that link and you'll get, and then, uh, then at least you'll get credit, credit for it. Nice. Yeah. Instagram would be great. Um, I think I posted the, uh, about the mixer on Instagram, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit more on social. I'm still relatively new to both Twitter and Instagram. So we're still building up our following there. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out at this late hour. I'm wired. I'm going to go eat some tacos and some cookies. <laughs> I'll keep the stream going for a little bit longer so um you know, keep the chat going for a little bit longer. Have a good night guys. Yep, I'm excited to see who comes out tomorrow, man. Have a good night guys. I'll keep the chat going for like another minute or so before I end the stream. Fun as always and we'll be back on Thursday for a regular scheduled time. Have a good night and peace out.